I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to the special edition of Earth from Space. This week, ESA is hosting the UN Environment Program's Authors Meeting, which is the first step in the preparation of the sixth Global Environment Outlook. This publication will provide information on environmental trends for air, climate, water, land, and biology, and analyze how different policy options may move us to a more sustainable world. Now with me today is the UN Environment Program's Director of Science, Jacqueline McLeod, and ESA's Director of Earth Observation Programs, Josef Ashbacher. Now Jacqueline, can you begin by telling me more about the Global Environment Outlook, its main objectives, who uses it, and where you've seen it having an impact? The Global Environment Outlook has always been seen as a flagship, not just for the United Nations Environment Programme, but actually for the whole of the UN and the member state community. The way they use it is to really give a backdrop to evidence-informed policy making, because it's not just about science, it's about the impact of that scientific evidence on what will happen in society and in the economy at large. So it's really about an integrated view. It's not just simply what do we say on climate change or on biodiversity, it's how does it all lead to a better outcome and in today's thinking how we will achieve sustainability. But the big change this time is that we want to drive it through the view of data, of real evidence coming from the planet as we sense it today, not just looking at the past, but really trying to build up a picture of the future, which is why we are here, joining hands with the European Space Agency here in Frascati to really upgrade the level of data that we use to inform our assessment. Now, Yosef, what is the link between what ESA does in the area of satellite Earth observation and the work that the UN Environment Programme does? The United Nations Environment Programme is doing fantastic work on uh, monitoring the state of uh, the environment globally, and that's exactly what ESA is doing. ESA is also looking at the state of the environment globally, but with satellites. The United Nations Environment Programme has a very strong link into the policy context, into how the member states are involved in environmental monitoring, but we do it from space. And I think this combination of UNEP, together with the European Space Agency's satellite program, Earth Observation Program, is fantastic. And that's why we are here together. That's why I'm very glad to host uh, the UNEP uh, GEO6 uh, meeting here, uh, where uh, 130 scientists from 40 countries are coming together and to see what space can do to monitor the environment. Now, considering the latest developments in satellite Earth observation, what do you expect to be the main differences between the previous Global Environment Outlook and the one being prepared today? I think it's really the nature of the information. It'll be more up to date. Um, something that Earth observation gives us is that immediate view of what's happening on the ground. And given the rapid and dynamic changes that we see on the ground, it's important that we seem relevant to today's debates. There's no point having evidence that talks about the past. And at the same time, as we are sitting here in Italy with the G7 of, uh, in front of us, it's also important that we give a move towards how evidence from the environment can really help change the nature of the future discussions on economy, on green finance, but even down to initiatives such as having climate change talked about in detail in Africa. Really facilitating the developing world to have at their fingertips the same kind of knowledge that we've seen in developed countries really propel technology and innovation. And that's what we hope to achieve with this GEO is tagging the outlooks, the emerging issues to what's happened in the past, but really giving access to data, to big data that we've never had before. So it's a very exciting proposition and I'm genuinely convinced that we'll see a very different kind of stakeholder process, a different kind of user community making best practice uh, kind of day to day of their, of their work. Now what specific areas do you see satellite earth observation helping the work of the UN Environment Programme? Um, let me come back to what Jackie was saying about the G7. The G7 is really looking at, at global challenges and uh, some of them are uh, food, water, energy, which are of course uh, in increasing their pressures on, on the population uh, worldwide. Uh, by uh, In 2035, uh, uh, the, the increased need for water uh, food and energy is 35, 40, 50 percent higher than today. So this is really uh, putting pressure on the planet uh, which needs to be monitored. And I think there we are working extremely well together because there we have the policy angle and also the scientific uh, knowledge of all the, the members of the various countries uh, through the UNEP uh, context where we can help with, uh, with space. Uh, what we are building up in Europe uh, together with the European Commission is the world's most comprehensive uh, Earth observation system in the world called Copernicus. And with this Sentinel 
series of satellites, we are constantly monitoring the state of the environment on a long term, on an operational basis, and therefore I think we can really contribute extremely well to the, uh, to the provision or the preparation of the report of GEO6. Well, Yosef and Jackie, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.